What's up, everybody? My name is Dell. This is Dell on Movies. Thanks for hanging out with me. And if you've been here before, thanks for hanging out with me again. And today I have a pretty special video, pretty different from anything I've done before. And this one is about you guys and what your favorite movies are. I put those that question out on uh, YouTube in my community tab a few weeks back. And I also put it on Instagram, uh, just asking people to tell me what their favorite movie was and why, if they could uh, articulate that for me. And then I would make a video reacting to it. So here is that video. I got some really interesting answers. And uh, let's just get into it. So we got a lot of responses to get through. Um, thank you guys for coming through. Uh, look out for more of these type of questions uh, in my community tab and on my Instagram page. And uh, let's have some fun with it. The first response that I wanna start with is from my guy Rich, AKA Turning Fan 77 and he replied that his favorite movie is Clerks 2. That movie has helped me through rough mental health issues, it's gotten me through a divorce and breakups and depression. That's why it's my favorite movie of all time. When you put it in those terms, there's really nothing for me uh, to say critically about the movie. That, that That's a movie that touched you deep, uh, deeply and it's personal to you. Um, so there's really no argument. I have seen this movie. I've seen Clerks. I've seen Clerks 2. And I honestly, I, I like Clerks 2 a lot better than the OG Clerks. And I know for a lot of people, that's kind of blasphemous. But I'm so, so glad that you have that kind of connection with Clerks 2. Uh, even if there's nothing particularly in the movie about those things that you were going through, even though our main character has, I think, I think he's broken up. I'm not, uh, I'm not for sure. But it's something that you turn to in those times. So great answer from you, Clerks 2. The next answer, uh, next response that I got is similar. And this is from Movie Nerd 87. And wow, that's a hard one. Have to be between Beetlejuice or Spaceballs because Beetlejuice was the first movie I ever watched since being born in the world. I remember my mom putting the VHS and it was in her bedroom guessing I was around the age of two. I remember loving that movie so much that the VHS tape got old really fast because I watched it so many times in a row. Spaceballs is special because I always watched it with both of my parents growing up and hearing their laugh, what made it more special for me and since they both passed away. I still hear their laugh while watching it again today. Sorry, it's just hard to pick one movie because there's so many movies I have watched. That's one of the reasons why I've been collecting movies for over the past two decades now and started my Instagram. All right, so there's a, a lot going on here. Uh, those movies that we come to when we're really young, you know, the nostalgia of it seeps into us. So we, we grow old with those movies and we never let go of a lot of these movies. And, and we all have them. Uh, Beetlejuice and Spaceballs definitely uh, are that for Movie Nerd. Really appreciate that. My personal experience with Beetlejuice is a little bit, a lot different actually, because I didn't see Beetlejuice even though I was a teenager when it came out. I did not see Beetlejuice until like two, three years ago for the first time. Really enjoyed the movie. And honestly, the exact same thing goes for Spaceballs. I didn't see it until a few years ago. I didn't enjoy that one so much. Uh, and I'm actually... A, uh, a Mel Brooks fan, but that one just didn't quite stick the landing for me. But for someone who saw it uh, the way you did, who who has uh, connected it to home life and your parents and still being able to uh, hear their laugh, as you say, uh, that is a wonderful, magnificent thing. So let's move on to the next response. And that response is from my guy, Jagoda Blue. Uh, Jagoda, I uh, said, Harlem Knights, one of the best cast assembled. I, I will agree, Harlem Knights is a fantastic movie. Um, Eddie Murphy, of course, is the lead actor. And he also uh, wrote and directed the movie. A lot of people don't know that. He wrote and directed Harlem Knights as well. Um, but uh, as far as that cast goes, I mean, you got Richard Pryor is there. Red Fox, Della Reese is amazing in this movie. Uh, you got John Turturro uh, in the movie. Danny Aiello is really great in the movie. Uh, uh, let me double check. I'm not sure about John. Not sure about John Turturro. I might have spoke out of turn on on that one. Um, the late great Robin Harris, of course. Robin Red Fox, Richard Pryor, also both passed away, and Della Reese all passed away, but they're all uh, legends, especially when it comes to black entertainment. 
Uh, and I, I got to see that movie in the theater on an army base. I was enlisted at the time and just had a blast laughing it up. And I've seen it maybe a dozen times since. So a really great movie for me. Next response is from a, a great friend of the channel, Miranda, a.k.a. Miranda's Movie Madness. Uh, definitely check out her channel. She is uh, amazing. And unfortunately, though, I can't say much about the movie she picked, but let's get into it anyway. Blood In, Blood Out, a film I probably shouldn't have been watching as a kid, but my siblings and I had it on replay all the time. It's just one I grew up on and remember wanting to be a Vado Loco. I just vibe with it and it stuck with me over the years. Seen it so many times. Wrote an in-depth paper on it in high school. Love it. I have... Uh, I've not seen it in full for sure and I think I've seen pieces of Blood In, Blood Out but that's been... Oh my God, that's been 20-something years. It's been a really long time. Probably 30 years. Um, it, it, I know it's got a, a, a loyal following uh, and it is a fun movie from what I understand. But I, I need to check out Blood In, Blood Out. It's one of those, every year I say, you know, I'm going to get to Blood In, Blood Out, and I just never do. So, uh, Miranda, a.k.a. Randy, this is this is one I'm, I'm putting on my, my list. I'm putting on my, my watch list. i got to get to this movie soon because it's been, just been too many years. Next up is we got Popcorn and Horror. The Labyrinth, definitely both my favorite and most rewatched movie of all time for me. And uh, same answer pretty much for, for you as for Miranda. I've not seen The Labyrinth in full. I've seen parts of it. And for whatever reason, it didn't grab me when I was a kid when it was, would come on. And so I've never went back to it. But it's again, it's one that I'm like, all right, I got to go rewatch it. I got to go rewatch it. Kenny Jones, 19, was the next person to respond. And his answer was Uncle Buck. That's the John Candy classic. Uh, honestly, I'm not a big fan of John Candy. Um, at least not at least not his movies. Uh, I like them on... Uh, what was it? SCTV. I liked more SCTV back in the day. Not a huge fan of Uncle Buck. I, I've seen it. It, it was okay. Um, I, I wish, uh, Kenny, if you're watching, uh, and next question comes out, if you don't mind expounding on, on your answer, that would be great. Uh, next movie is another movie that I just definitely have never seen. I'm getting to a lot of movies I haven't seen. This is sad. Uh, it's, I Want That Movie is the person who responded and they said return of the living dead many reasons but Lene quigley is my all-time favorite horror actress and her as trash is iconic one of my favorite zombies is tar man and both my brother and i made this our go-to horror movie as kids rented anytime was available and rarely was it a cheesy good time with fun characters highly recommend i am a fan of Lene quigley somehow i've missed this movie but fear not, I actually just bought this movie a couple of months ago. I found it on Blu-ray for a pretty good deal. So I do have it in the collection, and I'm going to get to it pretty soon. Uh, I've seen, I've probably seen maybe half, a, somewhere between half a dozen and a dozen Lene Quigley fan movies, and they're all a lot of fun. She's, she's a B-movie icon, uh, so no arguments for me for anything that she's in. Uh, next person is a movie has a movie that I've definitely seen. This is Movie Miyagi, and the name should be a giveaway. And the movie is The Karate Kid. Uh, Karate Kid is a movie that I got to saw, and that's really the, the only answer that they gave. Karate Kid is a movie that I saw when it came out in theaters back in the day. Me and my friends went, um, and I, I will talk about that more in depth in a later video. But we just had a blast with it. And the the Cobra Kai were great villains, and watching them chase uh, Johnny or Daniel Daniel woo, Johnny's in the Cobra Kai, watching them chase Daniel around, and then of course Mr. Miyagi, as the name says, movie Miyagi, and watching Mr. Miyagi just do his thing, and we just had a blast with that movie. So it's a movie I've returned to a, a few times over the years. Next is my guy Cody, aka Dude Who Loves Movies, and his movie was Child's Play Two. And he says, Child's Play 2, as a kid, my grandma owned a grocery store where you could rent movies, and I spent most of the days looking at the Child's Play 2 VHS as, a, as the cover was terrifying, yet very intriguing to a small child. My mom rented it for me one day, and I absolutely was terrified, but in a great way, and it was the movie that started my love for horror. Whenever I see the Child's Play 2 cover, it takes me back to that time. 
Now, as an adult, I feel like not only is it a great horror sequel, it's a great sequel in general. I, I would agree with that. Uh, Child's Play 2, for a lot of people, is actually better than the original. I, I really did enjoy that movie. It's been some time since I've seen that movie, but I really did enjoy it. I'm a little older than, than Cody, so I was... Uh, well entrenched into the horror genre by the time Child's Play 2 came out, but this is fantastic that this is the movie that opened up the, the floodgates for him, so to speak, and, and got him in. And those VHS covers were powerful things. I uh, obviously grew up during that era. You would go in and see all these covers, and, you know, that's really the first... The reason, the first reason you would pick a movie for a lot of us, you know, is that it's the cover. What does the cover look like? If that cover grabbed you, you just had to see it. And so many movies I saw just because of the cover. And I'm jealous, you know, if my grandmother, my grandparents had had a, a, a grocery store where we could rent movies, I, I would have never left. So I would never left the store uh, except to go home, watch the movie and come back. So good for you on that one. The next response is from, is a really special response for me because this is actually uh, my sister, my real life blood sister. This is Fit Girl 100 is the name she goes by on Instagram. Um, she's she's Fit Girl for a reason, you know, heavily into physical fitness and uh, and just holistic so she and I'm so proud of her. And the movie she came up with, well, she said too hard to pick one think I'm going with The Color Purple or Love Jones or Annie. So let me talk about all three of these movies here real quick, sis. So I'm going to start and I'm going to go with the one in the middle, Love Jones. I love Love Jones. It's a fantastic movie. I know you love Love Jones, but we've never had a conversation where I was like, you know what? I think that's your favorite movie. I know we've talked about you love it and I love it, but I'm going to say... I'm going to cross that one off for you. And that leaves us with The Color Purple and Annie. And I'm not talking about the the Annie that came out a few years ago with Jamie Foxx. We're talking about the OG from the 80s. So I'm going to start with that one. If, if it was childhood, if this was, this was, we were in our childhood, Annie would be the clear, 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 clear choice. I'm going to put you on blast for a second, sis. So there was a period of time. I want to say this period lasted maybe six months, maybe even a year, but I think it was closer to six months, where after she saw Annie, she watched this movie every single day. So at that time, back in the day, we only had one VCR in the house, and it was in my mom's room. My mom worked during the day, so she usually wasn't there when we got home from school. So you know, I'd get home from school. We'd all get home from school. And, um, you know, we do our homework and go our separate ways. And my sis would, would make a beeline right to the right to mom's room, put Annie in, put the tape in and just sit there and watch Annie every day. We we all you know we got she's got three brothers, his three boys. And we all were so sick of Annie. We would you know we walk by the TV and kind of roll, roll our eyes. But you having that connection with the movie it, it is uh, amazing when you think back on it as a kid. I couldn't really appreciate that. And then that leaves us with The Color Purple. As an adult, I know The Color Purple is po probably your favorite of all time, one that you can more relate to as an adult. Uh, more, it, it speaks to, it just speaks to you more as a person, and you can feel for the characters a little bit more than you could probably Annie. And I'm, I'm just really projecting right now so you let me know if that's true or not but yeah those are all three great choices from my little sis so happy that she responded the next response was from celeste de la cabra uh celeste has a fantastic channel and i'm always pumping up their reviews because they're just their their analysis of films more than reviews actually especially if you see the one that they did for uh poor things not long ago a really great analysis of that film uh, broke it down not only how they feel about it but also how others feel about it and whether or not they agree so in this case Celeste picked The Wicker Man from 1973 not that Nicolas Cage trash the first time watching this was genuinely life-changing I've seen it many times since then and my appreciation only grows the music the themes the script the ending perfection I have seen The Wicker Man several times, and I could not agree more. It's it's a movie that it 
I will say this. If it's a movie that if you just take your average person who, you know, watches a movie here and there, you know, they'll watch a movie or two a week, like most people tend to do. And they're generally sticking with a lot of mainstream stuff and you show on the this version of the Wicker Man. It may not enjoy it, may not get it, because it's just kind of weird, kind of out there. But if you are a person who likes to uh, peel the layers, so to speak, of a movie, and you know have fun doing that, and then have fun debating exactly what the ending means and connotates and those kinds of things, Wicker Man is a fantastic watch. Uh, so great pick, Celeste. Uh, next is Camp Flashback and Camp Flashback picks Cycle 2 best sequel ever made in my opinion great atmosphere writing directing acting etc couldn't believe how good it was when I first saw it uh, Cycle 2 is better than it has any right to be I, I will totally agree with that um, it's a sequel 30 some odd years no 20 some odd years because uh, it came out in the 80s 20 some odd years after the original and that happens all the time now i mean we've seen it a lot in the last few years but back in the 80s that didn't happen you either rebooted it uh, or you made a sequel that was going to be super horrible and in this case they exceeded expectation and uh anthony perkins uh as Norman Bates is as good as ever in this movie. So if you haven't seen Psycho 2, you've seen Psycho, but you haven't seen Psycho 2, check out Psycho 2. Uh, next one is from Just Another Movie Night. And they say it's hard to say, but I constantly tell people it's Jaws. Well, if you constantly tell people it's Jaws, I'm going to say it's Jaws. And that, there could be no better pick than Jaws. I mean... Jaws is a movie I saw as a kid in a theater, believe it or not, back when it came out. Now, I know originally it came out in 75. I was about four then. I don't know if I saw it in 75 or 76 or 77 because back then movies would stay in the theaters for a really long time. And then if they went out, they would come back. So I'm not sure which year I actually saw it, but I know I was really young. And it scared the life out of me. I, You know, swimming is not my thing now, partially because of Jaws. And I recently rewatched it. Actually, it's probably been over a year since I rewatched it, and it's still a fantastic film. Uh, now, of course, the nuances of the story uh, work better for me than it, than it did, you know, when I was a kid. I, I've seen it, you know, a few times when I was younger, but now as an adult, the nuances of the story work better for me, and um, it becomes even better now than it was then. So, no argument with me for Jaws. The B&B podcast, uh, their reply was Predator, and Predator is just all sorts of fun. Uh, I did not get to see Predator in theaters for some reason. You know, I saw a lot of Arnie movies in theaters back in the day, but I didn't get to see Predator until it hit VHS, and uh, me and my buddies, me and my best friend, we got to watch it, and, and we just had a blast, you know, with the invisible Predator, and uh, and taking out the team one by one. I'm sorry if I'm spoiling it for anybody, but it is just a great 80s, slightly cheesy movie. And Prey, the latest entry into that franchise, is also fantastic. So check out that one. Next is Ray's Movie Space, and they pick Slapshot. Slapshot is another one of those movies that I have not seen. I'm very familiar with Slapshot. I, I know it's uh, it's by most people considered the greatest hockey movie of all time with Paul Newman in the film. And that's another one was one of those that's just been on my radar forever that I need to get to. Next movie is Kyle the Cinephile. Uh, next response was Kyle the Cinephile. And Kyle says, probably Back to the Future. I always like time travel. And I love Back to the Future. Back to the Future is uh, a staple in this household, in my household. And I love the movie ever since I got to see it back in theaters back when it first came out. And then it became elevated after I started showing my kids that movie. And my youngest daughter, she is really loves that movie. That is her favorite movie of all time. And every now and again, we'll just watch the whole franchise. And so, yeah, I, that one's close to my heart. Next one is Leroy Green 85, and if you know who Leroy Green is, that will give you the answer, and 1985, that will give you the answer uh, to the question for Leroy, but to spell it out, it says, well, we talked about this in one of your videos, but The Last Dragon for me 
it has had a deep impact since I first saw it in 1986. At first, I wanted to emulate the hero, and as I've gotten older, I embraced the simple life messages in the film about finding the confidence within and facing through adversity, etc. Plus, if you think about it, there hasn't really been another film like it in terms of martial arts, infused with music, romance, and comedy. Uh, yeah, this is another movie that I grew up on, and he, Leroy is right on the money with this movie. I mean, first, it was, I never wanted to emulate Bruce Leroy because I was such a Bruce Lee fan, so I wanted to emulate Bruce Lee more, but Bruce Leroy is a great character who I've always uh, really liked, and uh, yeah, the action of it, and the music, and all the flashy things that happen in the movie, and, and it's just a fun time, all of that got me, but yeah, as you get older, you, you do realize that there's some simple messages in the movie that are poignant still. And, and he talks about it right here, finding the confidence within and, you know, working through adversity and being able to overcome difficult odds. And, and that's what happens in, in this movie. The next response was from my guy, uh, Vinicio the Horror Cholo is his channel. And I haven't heard from Vinicio in a while, so glad to hear from him. And I know it says Verez Loco up here, but yes, it's Vinicio. And the answer Vinicio gives is, I think mine has changed back to Return of the Living Dead or Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I've already talked about Return of the Living Dead. Uh, Killer Clowns is a movie I have seen several times, and it's just an all-out blast. And I know uh, that Vinicio is a big horror fan, and this movie is most certainly right up his alley. Uh, and if you watch it, it it's, it's kind of cheesy fun, a lot of cheesy fun. And it, it doesn't take itself too seriously, but it is just highly, highly entertaining. The next response, actually two responses, one from Vicky Zamore uh, and the other movie collector maniac. Uh, both say true lies. Vicky just says true lies on her response. Movie collector maniac went a little more in depth. Uh, says true lies is also my favorite of all time. The action and comedy go so well together. I'm a big Arnold Schwarzenegger fan and watched all his films growing up. The comedy from Tom Arnold and then you have Bill Paxton pretending to be a secret agent using what Harry Tasker does for a living to try to and sleep with Helen, his wife. Speaking of Helen, a.k.a. Jamie Lee Curtis, that sexy dance was great. Then you also have the lovely Tia Carrera. I'm glad it finally has a Blu-ray, but definitely even better a 4K. I have yet to watch my 4K yet. Though, because I've recently watched True Lies not too long ago. True Lies is a great movie. I mean, everything that Movie Collector Maniac says is true about the mixture between comedy and action. Uh, it's one of Arnold's best acting performances because he, he really sells both. He's always been able to sell the action. And as the years have gone on throughout his career, he's been able to better sell the comedy. And by the time we get to True Lies, he was pretty much a master at it. Uh, so I, I really enjoy his work. Tom Arnold, I'm never the big, a big fan of, but he was great in this movie. Bill Paxton, always fantastic. And when we talk about Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, for my money, this is the best she's ever looked in a movie. And, and yes, her comic timing was brilliant as well. Tia Carrera, I had a crush on her back then. And, uh, wish they gave her a little bit more to do in the movie, but she had some great scenes and a great fight with Kathy Lee in the back of that limo and, you know, going over the bridge. The action is just crazy. James Cameron really was on his A-game. He directed the movie. And I, I wish we got more of this from James Cameron. Not necessarily True Lies, but just more more uh, more action, fun action movies. Uh, and, you know, instead of those Blue People movies that we're getting now. But, you know, he's got a track record a mile long with some great films. So I can't complain too much. Danny K Reviews uh, responded with, Pulp Fiction, the movie that opened my eyes to what a movie could be, made me a Tarantino fan before I really knew anything about following directors and their filmographies. Uh, it's a great point because it did that for a lot of people. Uh, the style of writing was is unique uh, for the time. And it's been copied so much that it's not unique anymore. But if you go back and watch it, it's still better than just than everything that's copied it. And that's what makes it so great. So, and, and Tarantino, he uh, say what you will about him as a person. I, I know he, you know he, he drops a lot of n bombs in his movies, and I know some people think he steals a lot. He calls it paying homage, but what he does is he inc incorporates that seamlessly into his style. 
and it makes his movies work. So I, I really do appreciate him and Pulp Fiction for me is his number one movie as well. My girl Caprice, aka Dracula in Ahara, was the next response. She says, such a tough call for me, rough call for me, but I have to go scream. And I'm going to assume OG 96 scream because that is my favorite horror movie of all time, too. We've talked about it uh, before. And yeah, it's just a movie that is a parody, but also a great horror movie. And for me, that's what a great spoof is. It, it can make fun of the of the genre or whatever it is, whatever the source material is, but it still has to be good at that thing while making fun of it and Scream pulls it off better than just about any other movie I can think of and Wes Craven was definitely on his A game with that one uh, I could go on forever talking about Scream because like I said it's my number one horror movie of all time and my number one horror comedy and one of my all time favorite movies as well so kudos to you great pick Caprice a little bit of Ray uh, mine is probably The Prince of Egypt. I'm not even religious, but that movie is absolutely gorgeous in every way. I, I've seen most of it. I didn't see all of it for some reason. Um, this is one of those movies I think I put on as a babysitter for my kids when it came out. Because uh, parents do that sometimes. Sometimes you just need a break and, hey, you guys watch that. But from what I did see, it is a gorgeous looking movie. I did have a good time watching what I have seen of it. I need to go back and you know watch it start to finish. Um, but it is definitely a good looking animation animated movie Jeff Man 316 another Jaws fan he just responded with this picture of we're gonna need a bigger boat nothing wrong with that movies Miller's contact 1997 the science versus faith argument that I've grappled with my entire life based on the Carl Sagan book that I really love this movie holds so much for me on a deeply personal level a I just saw Contact a couple years ago for the first time also, and I will agree, the science versus faith argument is um, central to that movie, and it gives you something to think about, gives you something to talk about with other people who've seen the movie, and I really appreciate movies that do that, uh, so I did really enjoy Contact, in fact, I need to re-watch it, uh, see if my thoughts have changed on it as far as what the movie is saying versus what I'm thinking. And uh, it's a, it's an argument that a lot of people have grappled with. So and they made a great movie out of it. Sam Hain Film Reviews uh, just said Psycho. Nothing wrong with that. And that is the movie that changed the horror genre forever. Uh, with one scene, really, with that shower scene. It's a fantastic movie if you've never seen it. And go ahead and check it out. It's a bit slow for younger viewers probably in this day and age but it definitely works as a film uh, as long as the pacing uh, doesn't bother you all of those responses came from uh, Instagram and now I have some more responses that came from YouTube and the first one is from film fan 7895 in February 1978 I was five years old and my older brother took me to see the original Star Wars it was still playing in the same theater since May my brother had seen it a few times already. I remember the huge majestic theater and it was the first movie I saw in a theater. I remember drawing images from the movie in kindergarten and first grade, even though I mostly forgotten it. It is still my favorite movie and started my love for film. We have a very, uh, pretty similar experience to it, except I'm the oldest, but my parents took me to see this movie. I can't remember if it was in 77 when it came out or in 78. Um, but right after that movie, you know, the world changed because it, it's a it, it, everything I'd seen before that, you know, there were, I saw lots of great movies before that, even though I was only six, seven years old. You know, I've seen some of the movies that uh, shaped my life, namely End of the Dragon. But this was something different. This was a sci fi movie. This was outer space. This was um, the hero uh, and just being a great person that you wanted to root for and a clearly defined villain and uh, just an all-out adventure and I, and I fell in love with the movie also uh, watching it today it is a little slow just like Psycho I talked about Psycho but it is a little slow for today's younger viewers so maybe you know, I understand when some people say they they don't uh, really 
uh, really like Star Wars when they first see it the first time, if they're just seeing it for the first time. Uh, but for me, the nostalgia is really strong, and I and it's always going to be a fantastic movie for me. Next is my guy Derek, aka Pure Hangout. He says, "Hook, fun adventure with humor, heart, and drama. Great art direction and beautiful score." Um, so F Hook is a movie, another one of those movies that I just saw recently. Uh, last yeah, last couple of years I just saw Hook, and honestly, I, I didn't much care for it. I think it's a movie that I came to too late in life. If I had saw it when I was younger, I probably would have liked it a lot better. And then nostalgia kicks in. Um, but it, I know that Derek did come to this movie a lot younger. And um, as my, my guy KB always says, when we see a movie for the first time matters. And uh, not to say that Hook isn't isn't a great choice because obviously you connected with it. And yes, it does have great art direction and a beautiful score. There's no denying that. And Robin Williams is fantastic as always. Next is another vote for Back to the Future. This is, uh, uh, sorry if I'm butchering the name, but uh, Aid Mahdi or Aid Mahdi. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but Back to the Future, because to me it's a perfect movie and endlessly rewatchable. And that endlessly rewatchable is key. Because um, there are a lot of movies that I've seen where there's not really anything I would change. You know, they're great movies. I mean, I love The Godfather and The Godfather Part 2. But I'm not rewatching really those all the time. Okay? Th this Back to the Future, I can throw it on and watch it all the time. It's endlessly rewatchable, as, uh, as she said. So, no arguments from me. Uh, T underscore C242 Heat, great action and great characters Heat is one of the best heist movies of all time no doubt, hands down, Michael Mann's best film in my opinion and I, I'm, I'm he's made some great films but I'm not sure if there's anything else even close and that shootout outside the bank that's just, uh, that's just top tier filmmaking right there uh, and the performances of Al Pacino and Robert De Niro are just amazing uh, and they really really make this movie and there was a TV movie made by Michael Mann I think it was called LA Story uh, I, I'll put it on the screen if that's not the name of it but I think it's called LA Story and that is the exact same movie he was actually the big screen remake of that and it is a thousand times better it's not that the, the TV movie did not have Pacino and De Niro in the cast and you can look it up online, that diner scene where they meet and they, for the first time, and they're sitting there and they're just talking across the table. There is that scene from the TV movie and juxtaposed with that scene from De Niro and Pacino in Heat. And you can see the difference that acting makes. Uh, they are both amazing and they really, really, really elevate that movie. And then, of course, you got Val Kilmer and the rest of the cast. That's all great. Uh, G Lil 88. Their response was T2. T2 is definitely one of my favorites as I watched it a ton with my brother when I was a kid. Honestly, I'm surprised I didn't see more of this answer because, you know, when it came out, this was the end all be all. It changed special effects. Really, the, the moment it hit the big screen, it it's a watershed moment. It became a watershed moment for special effects and even for sequels because sequels kind of had a bad rep at this time. There weren't that many that were good and this one was amazing and there's another one of those theater experiences for me and I just remember sitting there just mouth wide open sometimes at some of the stuff I saw on the screen and then rewatching it years later it's crazy how much of it still holds up uh, some of it, it doesn't it's a little wonky in some places but I mean talking about 30 year old movie here so that's expected and uh, but watching it back then in the early 90s it was just it was amazing to watch uh mellow mutant teenage mutant ninja turtles 1990 and this is another one of those when you see it kind of things i i do like the movie so i'm not i'm gonna start there i do like the movie mellow mutant um it's just not one of my all-time favorites and i was probably too old for that to be the case um by that time i was uh, 19 years old by that time it came out so I enjoyed it for what it was and I did like the video games and, and even some of the cartoons beforehand but it's not one that I could say oh it's my all time favorite movie but again had I been a few years younger it probably would have been 
Um, and, and of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies, it was my favorite until recently when I saw Mutant Mayhem. That one really knocked it out the top spot. Um, but totally respect that choice because a lot of people hold that movie in high regard. And who am I to tell them not to, right? Uh, Big Nack 007 uh, responded with The Godfather. We talked about that uh, just a teeny bit about how it's not highly rewatchable. And that's really just three hours long. And it's a little bit slow. But it is amazing film making by Francis Ford Coppola. I, I prefer Godfather Part Two, but I mean it's like that much difference between the two. Uh, Marlon Brando is is great in this short bit of time he actually has on screen. But it's Al Pacino and uh, James Caan really make that movie. Robert Duvall is great in that movie. Also, everybody in this movie is, is great. Um, it, matter of fact, it's time for another rewatch because I recently just got it on 4K. Uh, the entire franchise which I've not seen in 4k so I, I do want to check those out again but The Godfather yeah one of the best movies ever made no doubt Hunter Robinson 2846 uh, this movie is recent so it feels weird to say it's my all time favorite but I have to go with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood I've watched it 11 times 3 times in theaters and I enjoy it more each time I love the characters the humor and it's got a lot of heart for a Tarantino flick I will agree with that last part for sure. It, it definitely does have a little more heart than most Tarantino movies. Um, it's not one of my favorite Tarantino movies, though. It, it, it feels a little bit drawn out for me. Uh, I, I feel like it, had it been edited down and made tighter, it would have been fantastic. You got a lot of phenomenal scenes in that movie, though. Uh, it just feels like it goes on a little bit too long but I do understand the love for it because there are just so many scenes that are just great and Leonardo DiCaprio or Brad Pitt they're just really selling it for all they're worth throughout that film so I, I totally get the love for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood we got two people for uh, this next movie we got The Death Video and we got Jonah's Movie Journeys and they both went with the movie uh, it's another one I'm I'm a little surprised I didn't get a few more answers for. And I know if my guy Tim over Tim Talks Talkies had answered, he would see this movie also. And uh, go check out Tim Talks Talkies, by the way. Uh, Jurassic Park, for reasons too numerous to mention, is just such a complete story. Acting and directing is superb from start to finish. There are so many layers of the story that it works for both kids and adults alike. And that's a divide not crossed by many serious movies. There are so many iconic shots and lines, and I can rewatch it a thousand times without ever getting bored. It's a masterpiece in spite of the few production flaws. Also, those animatronics are amazing considering the year it was made. Uh, the animatronics and the CGI, because it was really a combination of both for Jurassic Park, and um, it still holds up. It's just, it's crazy to think that it does still hold up. I wonder, was it 90? Two, was it or 90, 97 I, I can't remember the year I, I, you guys know what year Jurassic Park came out but it is crazy to think that those effects hold up even better than some of the sequels um, They because they just, they just gave it their all for those the T-Rex scene is iconic even though it has one of those uh, production flaws in it uh, the first time you get to see a dinosaur at all really blew me away I didn't get to see this movie in theaters what I I did I saw it at home, and my mom had um, I had just had been home living with mom for a few uh, when it came out. Uh, this is after I was out of the military, and at that time she had a uh, I want to say it was a sixty five inch or fifty five fifty five or sixty five inch, but it was a projection TV, one of those huge things that you know sat on the floor was tall as me almost and definitely wider than me and it, it this thing had wheels on it she could wheel her around and this is at a time when the biggest tv most people had was 32 inches right so having a tv this big was just crazy and that's how i first saw jurassic park it was on that tv and the first scene where we see the the uh at brachiosaurus i believe it is and i was just my mouth kind of dropped open because that was just crazy and then the rest of the movie, of course, the storytelling is just, you know, it's classic Spielberg. He knows how to draw you in and push you to the edge of your seat and then bring you back with just just all sorts of filmmaking techniques. Yep, it has some production flaws in it, but 
you know, lots of movies do. Even the greatest movies of all times do. So I'm not gonna, you know, hold it for that. It's it's really one that you don't even notice until years later when somebody says it a lot of times if you're just coming to the movie for the first time. So no arguments with me from for Jurassic Park. The last response is from Wampler13 on Instagram, on YouTube. You may know him as Steve Moody, great friend of the channel. Go ahead and check out the video from a few weeks back when uh, I actually got to meet Steve in person. Steve wasn't on camera, but he gifted the channel with plenty of, of great movies as he upgraded some things and discarded some things and he said, hey, Dell, uh, if you want them, they're yours. So go ahead and check that video out. And I'm going to end with his response because it actually leads into to me. Uh, today I'll go with the Big Lebowski. It's always in the mix of my favorites. The first time I saw it, I just instantly related to some of the characters in the film. I knew a guy just like the dude, a guy just like Walter, and a guy just like Donnie. I also just thought the movie was fucking hilarious. Then I learned Walter was based on John Milius, who was involved in the making of some of my other favorite films. And the more I learned about Milius, the more I loved Walter. It seems I still notice something new in it every time I watch it. What is your favorite? Today I'll go with the Big Lebowski is a powerful sentence to me because for a lot of us and a few people here expressed that concern, they couldn't pick a movie, you know, just by itself. They were like, oh, I have this movie and that movie and that movie. Well, that happens with a lot of us, and that's okay uh, because sometimes it depends on how you're feeling. You know, today the Big Lebowski is his favorite, and maybe tomorrow it's something else. Uh, and not that he loves the Big Lebowski any less, it's just that, you know what, something else is just it's a little closer to me today and that changes and that's okay we're human beings uh it's the first time he saw it he said i related to some of the characters in the film and then he talks about how he knew a guy like you know pretty much all the main characters in the movie and that is a powerful powerful thing uh when you can relate to the people on the screen in such a way that you feel like you already know them you've met them you know you've spent time with these people so what you're watching them do is just extra on top of how much you already feel like you know them and then the last thing was uh, i still it seems i still notice something new in it every time i watch it that's also a great reason to keep coming back to a film is when you can consistently just find something new whenever you go back to it so that makes the big lebowski a great answer and i'm going to finish up with his question to me what is your favorite if you're if you've been watching my channel you might know what my favorite movie is or and it is spike lee's do the right thing uh 1989 and a lot of the reasoning is actually the same as what steve has uh in his response to me uh i relate to all those characters in the film i've either spent time with them or i came across them in just in in passing you know i i grew up in new york for people who don't know i'm not in new york anymore i, I grew up in queens um and spent lots of lots of lots of time riding the subway and lots of time in brooklyn and yeah I, i've it's like i've either met this met these people you know you know when i've gone into pizza pizza parlors or other stores or pass these people as i was going to the subway you know i, I passed somebody trying to sell me pictures or tell them to sell me anything and some of those people were special needs people um like smiley in the film and i knew so many people like mookie and and just like um and even bugging out and all those guys all those people that were hanging around bugging out and the mayor and I, sister I, I just mother sister I just knew people just like every one of those characters so that is a powerful powerful um attraction to me for that movie and then you get into the politics of do the right thing and it that's also powerful because that's something I've had to deal with my entire life I mean there a, a lot of people I, I know a lot of people Especially when you talk about Spike Lee movies, it's, um, you know, he's, well, he's always talking about race. So why is everything about race? Well, in, in this country, race is just a huge factor on every aspect of this country. Uh, whether you're talking about between black people and white people, whether you're talking about between white people and Native Americans and white people and Chinese people for the time. And it just every aspect of this country has been touched and, um, in some in a lot of cases poisoned by race so if you're on the receiving end of the bad 
side of racism, uh, whether directly or indirectly. Yeah, it's something that that uh, sticks with you, something that you notice when you see it and something that when it's brought up, you, you pay attention to because you want to you, you want to see what they're saying about it. And this movie says a lot of the a lot of the things that I have thought at one time or another, whether it's on a uh, on more of the the movie ends with two quotes from one from Martin Luther King, one from Malcolm X, and whether at some points I've thought like Martin Luther King, or at some points I've thought like Malcolm X, and a lot of point a lot of times it's a melding of the two. And this movie just did that for me. It, it, it just pretty much did everything to me. It put me, it, 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 well, not put me, it put me in my own world, really. Because like I said, I, 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 I really know those people. Um, and then it gave me the things that they dealt with. They gave me the things that I was dealing with. You know, they were also dealing with. And we got to see different aspects of it from all sides. So that's why that's my favorite movie of all time. Uh, I'm going to end the video here. And I just want to say thank you again to everybody who responded. I, I really appreciate that. I hope you enjoyed my reactions to your answers. Um, keep an eye out for more questions like this on the community tab here on YouTube. And in on Instagram, I will post questions, the same questions also. And we can do this again. I, I really enjoy doing this. That's all I have for you on this one, guys. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.